Welcome to Link G4X Training Part 21. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at working with our fuel injection timing. The fuel injection timing is going to be when we want to spray our fuel in the auto cycle and time it against the intake valve opening and closing events. Ideally, we always want to spray fuel into an open intake valve. That's going to get the fuel into the engine as efficiently as possible. When we're working in sequential and semi-sequential injection modes, we can have a table that's going to allow us to have dynamic control of when we have that injection event against engine RPM and load. I'm going to go through how to program that table and how to populate some values based on cam card information or a trial and error method that works extremely well to get your injection timing sorted out for the engine that you're going to be calibrating. So without further wait, let's jump into this video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our fuel injection timing programming within our PC Link software. Our fuel injection timing is going to be where we want to spray our fuel injector in relation to the auto cycle and the crankshaft rotation and also referencing our intake valve opening and closing events. What we want to find and what we will try to accomplish with injection timing is that we have the fuel spraying into an open intake valve or right before the intake valve opens, that's going to get the fuel into the engine as efficiently as possible. If we time it wrong, we're going to have a decrease in our fuel economy and we're going to find we have drivability problems. It's not going to drive as smooth and we're going to be taxing the acceleration enrichment events a little bit more. We have to increase the injector pulse width coming from the acceleration enrichment um, to be able to mask up the improper timing of where the injector is actually spraying the fuel. So all things we want to avoid. So if we get it right, we have an improvement in fuel economy, we have improvement in drivability, and potentially have an improvement in power production. So we're going to be covering how to properly program the injection timing here in the video. Now before we go into any more details, there are some very specific things that we need to know about the injection timing that we need to get out of the way first. The Probably the most important thing is the injection timing is only going to be available in sequential and semi-sequential injection modes. Now we talked about our injection modes here in a specific video previous in the training series. Let's jump in here quickly and just cover what this represents. So we have our single point group, that's our throttle body based injection. We have our multi point group, that's our essentially our bank to bank style fuel injection. These two options here are going to be assumed that you don't have a cam sync. The cam sync is going to allow you to track the engine's position during the auto cycle uh, more precisely than just using our crank trigger alone. So we'd find that the sequential, semi-sequential options here, these are going to be what we can use our fuel injection timing uh, with, and if we were going to find our single point and multi-point groups, we're not able to use fuel injection timings with these modes here because we don't have a cam sync to track our engine's position within the auto cycle as precisely. So we want to go and choose sequential or semi-sequential as our, uh, our modes here in order to utilize fuel injection timing. Now, it, you can still make an engine run properly in your multi-point group or single point group, but you are not able to as precisely time the injection events. You're not able to get the drivability out of the large injector. So something like a 1700 or 2200 cc injector, they're never going to run as smooth as in a sequential or semi-sequential format here. So the sequential is going to be the most ideal way to be able to tune any engine, but it's going to depend on how many number of injector drivers we have, number of cylinders we're working with, and then if we have a cam sync or not. So um, I'm going to be choosing sequential as my option here to go through the rest of the tutorial. I'm going to be assuming you're running again sequential, semi-sequential to be able to use this injection timing. Otherwise, we're not able to utilize it and if uh, we're stuck with this single point or multi-point group. Let's go and click OK here and we can find that it's going to be changing our injection mode to sequential. Now the next thing we need to do is jump from our basics page into our fuel page. Within here, we can move to the right side of the screen and we're going to find we have our injection timing table and then down below programming details for the injection timing. So what we're going to find here first and foremost is that we have our injection timing mode set to single zone. In a single zone format, it just relies on one static value to program our injection timing for idle, cruise, and high, high RPM and wide open throttle conditions. We can be more specific than this and we can actually go from a single zone to a table. Um, as far as I know, every single base calibration file from Link uses a single zone injection timing reference. Um, they don't utilize a three-dimensional table. There may be a base map that I'm not aware that uses a three-dimensional table, but most just use the singular value here. And this is an excellent starting point, but we can be more specific with this, which is why we want to go and check out a injection timing table and how to populate it and how to work with it. So we can find the next option here is injection timing position. And this is where we're going to be talking about here in a second what this represents with a graphical illustration. It's going to be a little bit easier to conceptually visualize what's going on here. But we're going to find we have some options. We have SOI or start of injection, EOI or end of injection, and then the last choice, center of injection or COI. Typically, on every kind of standalone, even OEM ECUs, they're always 
going to be, or usually always going to be working with the EOI based fuel injection or end of injection based preference. We can choose the start of injection. This is really for a direct injection engine. Um, we can, can work with this, but it doesn't make as much sense. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.